Hello, and welcome to Intermediate Financial Accounting 2, Tutorial 11a. This video will review accounting for capital leases in an Aspioni scenario, where the residual value is unguaranteed, the lessor's implicit rate of interest is unknown, and there is no transfer of ownership. This video has five key learning objectives. The first learning objective will be to calculate the lease payment from the lessor's perspective. Second, we will calculate the present value of a lease from the lessee perspective and determine the capitalized amount for the lessee. Third, we'll illustrate how to assess all the relevant capital lease classification criteria for the lessee under ASPI. Fourth, to prepare the necessary journal entries to account for capital leases from the lessee perspective with an unguaranteed residual, unknown lessor interest rate, and no transfer of ownership. Last, we will prepare a partial balance sheet illustrating how capital leases are to be disclosed by the lessee. This video is based on the Pebbles Company and Bam Bam Incorporated A example where Pebbles, the lessee, reports under ASPI, and in a scenario where the residual is unguaranteed, and the lessor's implicit interest rate is unknown. The first requirement is to calculate the lease payment as determined by the lessor. In this example, the lease payments are made at the beginning of each period, so make sure your calculator is in BGN mode. Remember, the lease payment is always determined by the lessor. The lease term is 7 years so n equals 7. The lessor's implicit rate and the lease is 10% so iy equals 10. The present value, or PV, of the asset fair value is $500,000. So remember to enter this into your calculator as a negative value using the plus minus button so you get the correct output. The future value, or FV, is $100,000, and this represents the residual value which is always used by the lessor to calculate the lease payment, even in a scenario where the residual is unguaranteed. This is a very important thing to remember. The lessor always includes a residual, whether guaranteed or unguaranteed, in the calculation of the lease payment. Once you have all of those variables entered, go ahead and compute PMT and you should get $83,784. Now on to requirement 2, where we will determine the amount to be capitalized by the lessee, and prepare a lease amortization schedule for the lessee. The capitalized value of a leased asset is simply the present value, or PV, of the minimum future lease payments. The lease term is 7 years, so n equals 7. Under SB, the appropriate interest rate to be used is the lower of the lessee's IBR or the lessor's implicit rate, if known. Since, in this scenario, the lessor's rate is not known, we have no choice but to use the 12% lessee IBR. The reason why this scenario is applicable only to ASPI is because under IFRS, and the adoption of IFRS 16, the appropriate rate to use in the lessee calculation of the capitalized present value is the lessor's implicit rate, as long as it is determinable. Even the most basic financial calculator is capable of calculating the implicit rate in a lease, so we can say the lessor rate is always determinable. If, for whatever reason, the lessor rate was not determinable, then the lessee's IBR, or incremental borrowing rate, would be used instead. The lessee then takes the $83,784 payment as calculated by the lessor and enters it as PMT. Finally, we set the future value, or FV, to equal zero because, in this scenario, the residual is unguaranteed. Now compute, PV, and you should get $428,253. Once we've calculated the present value of the minimum lease payments, we compare that amount to the $500,000 fair value and capitalize the lesser of the two amounts. In our case, $428,253 is less than $500,000, so the amount to be capitalized by the lessee is $428,253. If we ever end up with a present value that exceeds the fair value, we cannot capitalize an asset for more than its fair value. So the $500,000 fair value is what we would capitalize. In case you were wondering, if this were an IFRS scenario, then the variables used would be 7N, 
10 IY, 83,784 PMT, and 0 FVT yield a present value of $448,685, and all the numbers from this point forward would change. Here is what an amortization table for this lease would look like starting with a balance of 428,253. Because the payments are due at the beginning of the period, all of the initial payment goes against the amortization of the discount. After that, subsequent payments will come with an interest calculation. In the next period, the payment of 83,784 includes interest expense of 41,336, calculated as the previous balance of 344,469, times the interest rate of 12%. The remaining 42,448 goes to amortize the discount. This repeats with every lease payment until the balance ends up at zero. Here, the balance is $2 due to rounding. Our next requirement here will be to evaluate all relevant lessee criteria to properly classify the type of lease to Pebbles, assuming the company follows ASPI. Under ASPI, there are basically four criteria to consider only one of which must be met to trigger a capital lease. The first criteria basically asks us is there a transfer of title to the lessee at the end of the lease. In this case, ownership of the leased asset reverts back to the lessor, so this criteria is not met. Next, we look for a bargain purchase option, also known as a BPO, where the lessee has the option of buying out the asset at a value that is less than the expected residual value at the end of the lease. If a BPO is present, it is reasonably presumed that the lessee will take ownership of the asset at the end of the lease term. In this case there is no BPO, so this criteria is also not met. Third is the economic life test, where we compare the 7 year lease term to the 9 year useful life of the asset. 7 divided by 9 equals 78% which is greater than the 75% benchmark, so this criteria is met. Finally. We consider the economic value test, where we take the $428,253 present value of the minimum lease payments and divide by the $500,000 fair value of the asset. The result is 86%, which is less than the 90% benchmark for this criteria to be triggered, so the criteria is not met. After considering all ASPI criteria, we conclude that this lease is appropriately classified as a capital lease. In case you were wondering, under IFRS, all leases are classified as finance leases unless they are deemed to be short term, or of low dollar value, neither of which is the case here. Thus, if there were an IFRS scenario, the lease would be classified as a finance lease. Next, Requirement 4 asks us to prepare the required journal entries for Pebbles Company to account for the lease for the years 2019. 2020, and 2021, and also to prepare the journal entry to record settlement of the lease in 2026. Pebbles enters into the lease on the 31st of December 2019. As such, we will debit an account called asset under lease, or something similar, for the capitalized value of 428,253, and credit a lease obligation liability account for the same amount. At the same time, the first cash payment of $80,784 is made, all of which goes against the lease amortization. So, we will credit cash, and debit the lease obligation for $83,784. If you like, you can offset the debit and credit to the lease obligation, and simply credit the net amount of $344,469. The next entry will be at the 31st of December, 2020 when the next lease payment of $83,784 is made. This time, however, the payment includes interest expense, which we can calculate as the original present value of $428,253, less the first payment of $83,784 and then multiply by the 12% interest rate to get 41,336. This will be debited to interest expense. We can also credit cash for 83,784, and the difference between the cash payment and the interest expense, or 42,448, is debited to the lease obligation. 
you can also confirm the values from the amortization table. Also at the 31st of December 2020, we cannot forget the depreciation expense journal entry. We calculate depreciation based on the capitalized value of 428,253, lesser residual value of zero, and divide by seven years, or the lease term. There is no residual value because the residual in the lease is unguaranteed. We use the lease term in this case because there is no BPO, or transfer of title to the lessee at the end of the lease. The calculated depreciation expense is 61,179, which we will debit to depreciation expense and credits to accumulated depreciation. Now we can skip ahead a year to the 31st of December 2021 and prepare the same entries again. The interest expense now is calculated to be 36,243, which we can capture from the amortization table, or by taking our capitalized value of 428,253, less the first payment of 83,784, less the amortization from the second payment of 42,488, resulting in 302,002 and multiply by 12%. And then again, our depreciation expense entry, which is exactly the same as the 2020 entry for 61,179. And now for the last part of this requirement, where we fast forward to the 31st of December 2026 and record the settlement of the lease. At this point, all we have to do is remove, or derecognize, the asset because after all the depreciation expense entries, the balance in the accumulated depreciation account would equal the asset under lease balance of 428,253. The entry to record the settlement of the lease, and the return of the leased asset to the lessor, is to debit accumulated depreciation, and credit the asset under lease accounts for 428,253. And now, on to our fifth requirement where we are to prepare a partial balance sheet for Pebbles Company as at the 31st of December, 2021. Here, at the year end of the 31st of December, 2021, we would see a non-current asset, the asset under lease, of 428,253, with an offsetting accumulated depreciation balance of 122,358. Based on two years of accumulated depreciation expense of 61, 179 each year, for a net carrying value of $305,895. Under current liabilities, we would show the current portion of the lease obligation of 53246 and a corresponding non-current lease obligation value of 201234 adding up to the amortization table balance at the 31st of December, 2021 of 254,480. It's important to see how that year-end balance is split into the current portion due in 2022, and non-current portions due thereafter. Now that we've completed our problem, we can review some key points to remember. Lease Payments, PMT are determined by the lessor and always include a residual, FV, in the calculation guaranteed or unguaranteed, using an implicit interest rate that may or may not be known by the lessee. Most, but not all, leases have payments at the beginning of the period, so set calculator to BGN mode, read the data carefully. Remember, the lessee takes the PMT from the lessor and determines the present value of the minimum lease payments. A residual is included in the lessee calculation, only if it is guaranteed. Under IFRS, the interest rate used by the lessee is the lessor implicit rate because it is determinable. Under SB, the interest rate used by the lessee is the lower of the lessor implicit rate, if known, or the lessee's incremental borrowing rate. SB capital lease criteria for the lessee include the following. Only one is required to trigger a capital lease. A transfer of ownership. A bargain purchase option, BPO, which assumes the lessee will take ownership of asset at the end of the lease. Economic life, lease term divided by useful life, is greater than or equal to 
Economic value present value of the minimum lease payments divided by the fair value is greater than or equal to 90%. The amount capitalized by the lessee is the lower of the present value of the minimum lease payments, or the asset fair value. Note, the capitalized amount cannot exceed the asset fair value. This is a common mistake made by students. And that concludes tutorial 11a. To see an alternative lease scenario with a guaranteed residual, a known lessor interest rate, and no ownership transfer, take a look at tutorial 11b.